Hey, what's going on guys? Okay, let's talk about a subject that really drives me crazy. And it's, um, it's one of the types of dogs that I turn down all the time. And that is dogs that suffer with separation anxiety to a high level. I don't mean just a little bit. I mean, really, really struggle and suffer. And let's talk about how we are creating that with our puppies. I talk to people every single day that have a puppy and they do everything wrong because in their minds, they are raising a puppy. If you have a puppy, you're not raising a puppy, you're raising a dog. And that puppy isn't going to be a puppy for very long. So all those little things that you do when you take that puppy home at eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks old, whatever, they matter. They matter a lot, but people tend to ignore that because of the cuteness, right? It's not a human child baby. It's not a human child baby. So all the things that you think are cute with a little puppy at eight weeks old, they're not going to be cute when the dog is 80, 90 pounds. And you have to think about that. Now, I work with a lot of people that are fortunate enough to spend 24 hours a day with their dog. Either they work from home or they get to take the dogs to, to the work that they do, to their office, a lot of people. And that's a great thing. That's a blessing, but it also can really destroy your dogs, right? So if you bring home a puppy and from day one, that puppy is with you 24 hours a day, you're never away from it. You're sitting there watching TV and the puppy's laying with you. You get up to go to the kitchen and get something to eat. The puppy follows you. You're watching TV. You get up to go to the bathroom. The puppy follows you to the bathroom. That's okay to an extent in the beginning, but there also has to be a balance and you have to start creating some separation while you're with that puppy. Now, while you're there, you can't wait till you actually have to be separated because that becomes a real problem, right? So one of the biggest things that dog owners overlook is making their dog tough. I don't mean like fighting tough. I mean, mentally tough. That's one of the first things I work on. I have to have my dogs mentally tough that I could put them in any situation where they're not going to struggle. And I do that because I love my dogs. I truly love my dogs and I want them to be stable. Because if you ever see a dog that struggles and suffers with fears that aren't really real, when they imagine these things and they can't be away from you and they hurt themselves trying to get out of a crate, that's a horrible thing. That's not love. That's not love at all. That's selfishness, right? So with me, of course, from day one, crate training is imperative. You have to do it. And it starts from day one. But I take it a little further. I'm going to make sure I crate my puppy in wire crates, in plastic crates. I'm going to put crates in different areas of the home. I'm going to put them outside. I'm going to put them in the garage. I'm going to put a tie down in my yard and tie the puppy up for a few seconds and let him get used to me walking away or just picking up poop for even if it's 10 seconds to begin with, right? But I'm always teaching the puppy that it's okay to be away from me. Always. And you have to do that while you're home, not when you're gone, day one. Most puppies struggle when you bring them home those first few nights, sometimes one night, sometimes three, four or five nights. You just took them away from their siblings and their mom and everything they know. And then you feel bad for them. So day one, they start sleeping in the bed with you. Day two, they sleep in the bed with you and they're sleeping straight through the night. They're doing great right? Then all of a sudden, a few weeks into it, you decide, you know, I need to crate this puppy because I need to leave. And the puppy's going crazy and screaming. Of course, you trained him that it makes sense to be with you all the time. So you have to address those things. I won't take a dog that suffers like that. What I do is I start giving instruction on how to start fixing that. Now, let's get it a little better before you bring me the dog, right? Well, how do you fix that? Well, you fix it the same way you prevent it, okay? If your dog is at your feet all the time and it's grown and it can't be away from you, you have to start creating a little separation while you're home with the dog. If you're sitting on the couch watching TV and the dog is used to laying at your feet, hey, you know what? Now let's put him over here six feet away and you can't come any closer than that. The dog's going to look at you like, what are you doing? He's going to get up and he's going to keep coming. No, no, no. You need to be over here. 
right? And you do that for a day or two or three, whatever it takes. And then the next day, you make it a little further. Or you put the dog in the other room and you put up a baby gate and it can't get to you. It has to learn to deal with its stress of not being right next to you because that's not healthy. That's not healthy. The dog suffers, right? Start crating the dog next to you. You're watching TV, you're making dinner, put a crate right where you're at, put the dog in the crate and let him get used to being there while you're there. Then the next day or the third day or the fourth day, whatever it takes, now you put that crate at the other side of the room where you're sitting there watching TV or cooking or doing whatever you're doing, sitting in your office doing work, right? You give the dog a couple of days there and when he's whining and crying, he doesn't come out. When he settles down and you've given him some time, now you go get him. It has to be a balance. But if you're going to fix separation anxiety, of course, the first thing is don't create it because you are creating it from day one. But the way you fix it is the way you prevent it. You have to create separation while you're with the puppy from day one. Or if you get a dog that's not a puppy and it's already grown or it's an adolescent dog, it's, an adult, it's the same thing, guys, right? If you get a dog from the shelter and it's two years old, and it still poops in the house, or pees in the house, or just doesn't know how to live in the home, and wants to be next to you, well, then you consider that a puppy. You start the training from day one like it's a puppy. We're starting the crate training. We're getting good management. The dog's going to be on a very tight schedule, right? Listen, I love my dogs. I'm a very affectionate guy. You see how my dogs look at me. You see how my dogs interact with me. I'm not always talking to them with baby talk and hugging on them and loving on them and just doing the things that people do because in reality, that's not for the dog. That's for the human and it's extremely selfish. It's so selfish and you're destroying the dogs mentally. You're making them weak. And when the dog is weak, it's going to suffer the rest of his life. And in my opinion, this may be just totally my opinion, but I've seen it. In my opinion, the more intelligent breeds, a lot of the herding dogs, the German Shepherds, the Malinois, the working dogs, the Rottweilers, the Border Collies, these very highly intelligent dogs, in my opinion, they struggle the worst. They just seem to really struggle and get so attached and used to being right next to you and following you everywhere. It's not healthy, guys. That's not what a dog is. That's not how a dog is supposed to live. You have to do what's right for the dog so the dog can do what's right for you. It can't be one way, okay? So start creating that separation from day one. If your dog is struggling now, start it today. Start creating some separation out of the crate and in the crate, in front of you, with you there, and then build on that, all right? Create strong dogs, guys. They deserve it. Peace.